so many stories I could go through to kind of help you out with this. And I've been praying about it. But first of all, remember that I don't make a video unless the Holy Spirit leads me to. So, um, and I don't say a word unless the Holy Spirit tells me to. So I've been dealing with this a few days, kind of pinpointing someone. And um, the issues in your heart that you're dealing with. Okay. Um, I prayerfully considered it. I just don't know what to do. That's where you're at. Okay. So at least you're trying. The scripture says the heart is deceitful. So what that means how you feel today may not be how you feel tomorrow. So when you're making your decisions and you've prayerfully considered it then I've already you already know what to do. Um, your issue is more I think I've gotten out of this. I don't know if I can take it if I go back to it. Right? Okay. Um, Normally, and the 180 I've been working on is just not uh, leading people out of fear of the unknown. Because you're coming to me, I know what's going to happen. So allowing you to make your own choices, well, that's how you ended up like this. So you've gotten your confirmation. Okay. And you can't get rid of the hurt. Okay. this expansive. <clears throat> Alright, so we shall uh, I was in my tabernacle and at the time I was corresponding with my wife little or not at all Seven years ago, I had set out on a journey and I was making my way to her slowly but steadily. <clears throat> and I was helping somebody out. And I got a knock at the door late at night. I was uh, asleep and then gonna go to work the next morning. Because my job was perfectly laid out for me. 
Obviously, it was of God, and I had waited for it. And then I used it to glorify God and all of these things that you have to take into account that aren't important to other people. So if you're dealing with someone that uh, is very selfish and if they're of the world, they're going to be. We're going to go further than are you equally yoked, okay? So, I get the knock at the door, I let the person in, I let them know, yeah, you can sleep here, but I'm going to work in the morning. And the person proceeds to kneel, and I pretended to be asleep, but I was watching them. And there were things that were in my tabernacle that were from my wife. And she had put a lot of effort and uh, money and it spoiled me. And this person proceeded to stick a needle in them. And I was like, what are you doing? And the person said, I thought you wanted me to do this. And some of the things were on my refrigerator and a card um, from her was there. <clears throat> and then the person uh, proceeded to turn things upside down on my refrigerator, push down the card. And I was wondering, okay, is this from the Holy Spirit or what? It turned out it was one of my angels that had gotten really, really lost. So that was my first time really um, being in a position where I'm wondering, because I had let another guy in and he had brought this one over and I was close to getting into a situation but it was the situation that propelled me into um, really learning about um, dealing with witches and familiar spirits, lying spirits and all of this and I also had a long drawn out vision <clears throat> That was so real, but I've had many of those. So it took me a while to really think about it. Because at the time I had so much that I was dealing with and a lot of people to help. There was a timeline. And I had already felt uh, that I was helping my wife and I've been making all these videos for her, so I knew it would impact her positively. So what I would say is, when all of this happened that created your hurt, was it in darkness? So then you have to look at it from uh, the perspective, okay. Was the person you were with, I'll say that, in darkness as well? Okay. And you were in darkness. Okay. Now that you're receiving your revelation and you've got your confirmation, <clears throat> then how can you hold that against the person? I also um, <laughs> was ministering and telling people to repent and all of these things at the time. Ended up visiting their fine facilities. I saw a vision of my wife 
Then I saw uh, people tramping through saying the Lord Jesus Christ will not be mocked. So uh, that actually happened. That wasn't a vision. And then the guy next to me in the cell said he was Jesus. So a lot of things have happened in your life. Then you need to also be... Um, <clears throat> If you're one of my angels, then you're not going to be able to shake the Holy Spirit. So then you have to look at what was impacting you. You were attacked. And if you looked at me and my wife's marriage from a worldly perspective, it would look like both of us were having affairs. You would have to sit down with us and we would explain, no, I can't take this city so I don't stay here. And then she would explain, yeah, he needs his time and all of this, that we're doing it for each other. We were that selfless with each other. And it took a tremendous amount of the Holy Spirit to get us um, out of the mindset of, okay, this is what it looks like, but this is not what it is. So when you have a familiar spirit or a lying spirit that can put a thought into your head when you're looking at something and twist it because its entire purpose is to split you apart so that it can get you with someone like it, you're getting a true perspective of what happened in your marriage. And if you weren't married on paper, you had no reason to believe you would ever uh, approach the, the law regarding adultery. And then you need to know how God is gonna treat that. So you can get yourself into a position that you're in right now and just feel stuck. Right? You don't want to displease God. And you don't want to be hurt. Right? No. Let me say. Well, change takes effort, beloved. And let me, um, let's take this into the church realm here. So I was led to a church and um, I sat down for one day in a divorce class. And the only person the Holy Spirit really led me to minister to was the one that was trying hard to please me. <clears throat> and his situation was um, pretty dire because he had just won custody of his child. And his wife was incarcerated and he was trying to figure out, he was doing it properly. He was trying to figure out, does God want him to stay with his wife or does God want him to get a divorce? So that type of heart I'll always honor and I'll answer. Sufficiently. And he had told me that his wife had some kind of tarot card pinned to the wall. And I asked the Holy Spirit, and I was like, yeah, that's his wife. So I didn't tell him flat out, that's your wife. <clears throat> I just said, remember that There's a lot of witchcraft going on, and that's a demonic attack. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, don't blame her for it. Like, you should have peace with your decision, and I'll pray for you. After he was leaning towards divorce, and he had said something that, uh, indicated 
<clears throat> that he thought it was God uh, telling him that he should get a divorce. And all I told him was, my spirit did not have peace with what you just said. So when you already know the answer, then what you're really asking is, will I remove the love for that person from your heart? And the answer is no. I was involved. Um, this is why I don't date. I don't believe in dating. <laughs> Courting, but not dating. To be able to um, sympathize and understand the human condition of how people make their decisions. And it's not based on faith a lot of times. And the person had written me this long letter trying to get back into my life. But I had been through so much with that person, I had already decided I didn't want to get pulled back into it. So I didn't even read the letter because I knew it had a chance. So if he's trying, that's where the forgiveness comes in. But um, I've also been feeling like you don't know how to forgive yourself. So I'm making this expansive. So I didn't even read the letter, right? I always had a little bit of love still for this person, but the Holy Spirit put me on a different path <clears throat> and I had my heart hardened at the time. And then trying to involve that person Bouncing from relationship to relationship is never a good thing. So, when God is bringing two people together, it's pretty evident. But if you're going to um, go on the path to bring other people into your life because you're lonely, then you're going to convolute what God is trying to show you. That's when you're going to approach adultery. So when we're dealing with fornication versus adultery, all these topics, the church has no idea what it's talking about. It's one of those areas that always kind of gets me going. Unless you know for sure, you shouldn't speak on someone else's marital situation. There's just too many stories on how God brings people together. It's not always what you expect. How can it be? When people are uh, conditioned by what they see and the person they want to be, who they model their life after. I was scrolling through my YouTube things. It's been strange. I haven't even watched really a YouTube video. I, they start playing. And I've just sat there for hours just seeing um, what's going on in my situation with my people <clears throat> in this um, scripture fulfilled right in front of you visual and then uh, his motivational techniques and what the world is teaching, to be a lone wolf, to do this, to do that, to not care what people think about you and all this. And I'm like, the Lord opposes the proud. So, uh, but at the same time, I'm also like, well, that's gonna lead a lot of people to their destruction. So, when you're stepping off the path with the Holy Spirit, you put yourself on the path to destruction. However, that's going to come.
God doesn't look at marriage as a piece of paper. So if he brought you together and you prayed on it, then you're asking me, all right, well, I don't want to wait for the person to come to Jesus. And if you're in that situation, the, um, the Spirit's telling me just flat out say it. If you're considering divorce, and God brought you two together, and you're the one considering divorce, then you are the problem. Because God will never lead you to divorce what he brought together. So then you need to be looking at the factors in your life that contributed to why you feel it will never work and what God is showing you in that. I'm completely aware that I look delusional. If you look through my videos, I'm sure many have thought, I don't think he understands. She doesn't really want him. It's pretty evident. He might be, and I've met a lot of people like that, where I've looked at them. Like, so understanding that, I'm walking by faith like everybody else. But I'm also conditioned to do that. And searching my own heart of how I got so um, fluent and using this sword in my mouth against my wife and wanting to remove that um, the motives for using it oh, I reflect like if someone tells me about myself, the things they don't like, I sit there and ponder and think about it. I pray about it. And that's how you grow. So what I did last year, I learned from, and a lot of things I'll never go back to doing. At that time, I had the grace to do that and the spirit led me to do that and then I've been waiting for the what have I learned and then knowing that um, you're going to overcome by your testimony I knew I was going to blend with a woman and take on their characteristics. I knew that. And then in some way, it became that person didn't like me as much. And I was showing them, well, this is you. This is how you look to God. And then fighting to get myself back to me <clears throat> based on what that person liked was really um, something I won't do again. And the reason why is it led me to just being pissed off. Um, but Holding a marriage together while you're pissed off is difficult. So not being able to have a moment where it didn't turn into a fight. That, right? This is why you need a marriage counselor. A competent one, I would um, strongly consider. They have 
Well, I'm not going to do that. There's too many teachings that will get you confused. Um, God sent us marriage counselors. So, if you've decided in your heart, because many people say, I've got my mind made up, this is, then you already know what you're leaning towards. Is it going to make you happy? Versus happier, like you can confuse yourself when you're going outside the will of God. I'm just going to tell you that flat out. If that is how your heart is postured, then that's where you're going to go. Look at what you're losing. Is all I could say. Um, anything worth having is worth working for. And that's what makes it special. But you can't push somebody into their happiness. I learned that too. And that's why you should just follow the Holy Spirit because I can block things off. I can remove people from your life. I can point out all these teachings that uh, people go to. Did God remove this person from your life? Did Satan send this person into your life? Weeks and tears, what it is. Uh, How do you know the difference? All these things that you didn't have before. So when you were hurt in the past, you didn't know that this person was going to do this to you. You didn't know this person was going to change on you. You didn't know then. So you learn from those things. That is still out there. And that should be your fear is falling in love with the wrong person. That is a healthy fear as a boundary of a mistake you made in the past that you don't want to make again. That makes sense. To receive uh, someone God sent you and treat them like that person treated you. Yes, you did that too, I know. then what I'm doing is breaking down all your lies that you tell yourself and then we're getting to the root. And the root is you don't know how to apologize. And then the more you go and the more you go from uh, the heart's perspective You believe the person, you just don't want to because you're scared of getting hurt again. But that's part of love, beloved. Let's confirm, shall we? Now, I've heard of many. I know there's all kinds of teachings, breaking soul ties, generational curses. You can take it as far as you want. Um, if you're sleeping with someone, spending a lot of time with them, you're going to take on their characteristics. If you're one of my angels, especially, you're going to blend somewhat. It's going to bring... Um, if you're light and you're with someone that's dark, you're going to pull some of that into you. But when you separate from that person, there's nothing to break. Because you don't become one flesh just sleeping with someone. Being married to someone in a godly marriage, then you're one flesh. But that's because God wants it that way. 
So your hurts and hangups, they came from life's lessons. Your um, Therefore the Lord will have no joy in their young men, nor have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the land is burned up, and the people shall be as fuel for the fire. No man shall spare his brother. And he shall... Okay. So... A lot of people, they don't teach that God gets angry with you. The scripture says, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. And I can assure you, he does. So, anger lasts only for a moment. You don't really want that on your life. And that's a preventive parenting technique, but not one that's understood. So you have a brother against brother spirit, and if that was operating, and it was, then it would turn you guys against each other. You need to really see it as biblical. And that's how God feels about divorce. So what you're really wanting is your peace and your joy and God's favor back on your life, God's presence back in your life. So it shouldn't really be um, so much about you worrying about situations that make you happy. It should be about Focusing on me and letting me do it for you because you're walking with me. And then you can see. Then you have no doubt. And then um, so many in this generation are different. Um, their thoughts and their uh, what's in their heart from the residue of the evil that was inside them. Look at all the factors, the big picture. And I'm a strategist, so that's just how I think. Um, fear is useful when you're trying to keep someone from getting hurt. And that's the hope you should have. So, me, myself, I looked at it like, okay, I waited all this time, this is what I was living for, was my marriage, you know, and then, It's like, now what? <laughs> right? So, you're just putting your faith in God and um, you're walking it out day by day. And if you keep doing that, the areas in your heart that need to be worked on are being worked on. And those are the steps you have to take. If you want a second opinion, feel free. But that's biblical truth. That's how God thinks, and that's what's going on in your life right now. All right. I love you.